Hello, Instagram and YouTube family. I love you guys. So we're going to dive right into the mini series. Remember, this is going to be talking about deceiving doctrines that have made their way into the church. Um, okay. And, and into the people of God. Um, so please understand there are going to be some things in here that make you go, ouch, meaning, wow, that makes me uncomfortable. Where is this coming from? That is the Holy Spirit nudging you, telling you, hey, perk your ears up to what he's saying because the things that he is saying are true and are against the things of God. OK, so enjoy or not enjoy. Embrace those moments of conviction. I always have to remind myself conviction is good sometimes or all the time because it lets us know, oh, man, like, let me let me seek the Lord about that. Right. Um, and again, please search the scriptures for yourself to make sure the things that I am saying are true. Be a good Berean, which means these are the people who studied the scriptures. OK, so before we get started, understanding of who Satan is. Check this out. These are called the five I wills of Satan, and these can be found in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 17. OK, so it starts like this. And this is God talking to Lucifer um, and also the reaction of people to Lucifer. And I'll explain as we go. So verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, meaning the devil, meaning Satan, son of the morning. Lucifer means light bearer, and he woke up the stars in the morning. He's saying to them, how you are cut down to the ground for who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, okay, here come the five I wills. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the further sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Five, I will be like the most high. It goes on to say, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, meaning hell, to the lowest depths of the pit, meaning the pits of hell. Those who see you will gaze at you. So this is going to be us looking down at Satan. And we're going to say to him and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the whole world as a wilderness and destroys its cities, who did not open the house of the prisoners. So we're going to look at Satan at the end of the age when he's in the pit of fire burning. We're going to look at him and go, that's the dude who caused all this trouble because he's going to be without his power. He's going to be weak. He's going to be defeated. Amen. So let's go into the verse that we're going to break down and I'm going to break down the doctrines. So here are some doctrines. Deuteronomy verse 18, verses 9 through 12. Listen up, family. When thou art coming to the land that God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. What that just basically said is when you come into the land that God gives you, do not take after these evil things that these people next to you are doing. That's what's happening. There shall not be found any among you that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things. Listen, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out before him. So listen to what I just said. What I'm things I'm about to break down the Bible is saying are an abomination, meaning like the worst thing, like horrible, like do not do this against God or you will end up in hellfire. OK, but what's awesome, if you are a practicer or have done any of these things, if you are still alive and walking this earth, you can repent. That's the biggest grace and biggest gift that we have as a human race is repentance. We have the ability right now to switch teams, meaning going, Dang, I was with Team Satan, but I realized where that leads. That's going to be very hot. Let me switch over to Team Jesus and life and choose life so I can have eternal life, right? And that's the choice that we all face. But uh, sadly, many people choose darkness. That's how that goes. But anyway, let's break it down. So the first part that says, um, there shall be none found among you who maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire. So you may be saying, what does it mean to pass through the fire? Check this out. In Leviticus chapter 18, um, let me, yeah, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21, the uh, scripture says, the art, or uh, sorry, says, pass through the fire is um, 
you're not allowed to sacrifice your do your son or daughter into Moloch. And what that means is there was a false god by the name of Moloch who required child sacrifice sons and daughters as soon as they were born to be passed through the fire killing them to be sacrificed to this god Moloch. So, um, in some versions in the Deuteronomy verse it says pass through the fires of Moloch. Some say the same, it's all the same thing, okay? So to pass through the fire means sacrificing your children or your son or your daughters. So let me bring something back to you. The practice of abortion is the same practice. We are sacrificing our son or daughters to the altar of convenience, these false gods saying you can do what you want to do, you don't have to live this way, whatever the excuse that we do to, for an abortion. That is an abomination to the Lord. But if you have done this, uh, one in four women, according to studies, have had an abortion. Um, and um, that that is semi-alarming due to the fact that um, that's so many children being just dismayed. And that alone, um, the reason why God always tells us don't worship false gods is because undoubtedly they will require you to do these type of things and say, hey, in order for you to appease me, you have to kill your children. In order for you to appease me, you have to go kill someone else. In order to appease me, you have to shed your own blood. But what's so awesome about Jesus is he shed his blood so we don't have to. Amen. So that's what that term passed through the fire means. Let's go on to the next one. For all that do these or sorry. Uh, son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination. So divination um, is the art or practice that seeks or foretells or um, to foresee or foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge usually by the interpretation of oracles or by the aid of supernatural powers. So what divination, these are your people who are your psychics, your fortune tellers, your tarot card readers, all of that type of stuff, right? Again, we don't know that these spiritual things exist so we kind of just, some people practice it, some people look at it and what it actually is is they're the psychics the mediums they are conjuring up spirits meaning they are bringing up spirits of the dead or or whatever to tell them hidden knowledge okay and again this is an abomination to the lord because we're supposed to put our faith into the lord not into demons or not into people who are um claiming to be something that they're not okay um and anytime you ever use these means of trying to gain knowledge it always comes with a price okay um and what happens is once you start to drink from the pitcher of sin it makes you more thirsty so if you drink from the living water of jesus christ when you drink it causes you to be full and never thirst again remember in scripture if you drink from this water you'll never thirst again speaking of the lady at the well right so when you drink from the pitcher of sin, it's like drinking out of the ocean. When you drink it, you just get more thirsty and you have to keep doing it, okay? So that those things open you up into the dark spiritual forces that then try to attach themselves to you. Funny, the word uh, yoga means to attach. So that's another one that we're going to have to cover later because that's its own teaching. But yoga attaches spirits to you. It teaches you to empty your mind so then it can be filled with demonic spirits. Oh, your son is preaching right now. So... That's divination. The last one that I want to cover is the biggest one um, of this portion. And we'll go on to the next one in part two. So the last one is, it says, or an observer of times. So this one took me for a loop and then the Lord revealed it um, to me. And I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Pastor Mac from uh, Calvary Chapel Signal Hill. Normally the pastor is J.D. Farag. Um, shout out to them. They're an awesome ministry, but he's the... Um, co-pastor there and he was he was teaching on the subject so I, I picked it up after him and then I went to go study it for myself and it, it was true so I'm bringing it out today um, so shout out to the people of God so an observer of times is this the Greek word the Greek root words of horoscope we all know what a horoscope is everyone's into horoscopes because um, they can kind of tell you your future whatever whatever that stuff is so is so accurate um, because of the fact that they use two methods to make it accurate. One, obviously, demonic forces influence the world, so it can know that it told you something and then make those, make those things happen in the earth based upon supernatural um, means, causing you to think that it knows your future, right? Or they can tell you things that you want to hear, right? If I went up to anybody and said, 2021 is going to be your year, it's going to be amazing, of course they're going to want to believe me because it's, it's, it's 
sounds good, right? Um, so they'll tell you a combination of things that you want to hear. Oh, I see great riches in your future. I, I see this, I see this, but then also it'll, it'll say things like, oh, you know, um, you're going through this, you're feeling a little down today, and then it can send a spirit to test you, to make you feel down, you know what I mean? Um, so that's how that kind of works. But anyway, the term horoscope, the word hora, which where we get horo, um, is a Greek word, um, H-O-R-A, which means time or hour. And then the Greek word uh, scopus, horoscope, horoscopus, the, re the root word of scopus means observer or watcher. So when you put the two together, you get observer of time. So then when you go back to the scripture, it then says use it that passes through the fire or uses divination or an observer of times. So here you get your horoscopes are an abomination to the Lord, meaning don't do them because the spiritual where they get their knowledge, how they get their knowledge is very, very dark. Um, and again, if you have done these things, all you have to do is say, whoa, Lord, I had no idea of these things. Please forgive me. I repent. I'm turning away. You know, cleanse me from that unrighteousness and help me walk closer to your heart. OK, um, that'll be the last one that I cover for today. So I want I got a couple more minutes. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper into these things. Um, so I won't move on to the next one, but please listen, when we get into that spiritual realm and we knock on those doors, what actually happens is it paves a way for us to be stuck exactly where we are spiritually or decline. All right. So we may never know we can be in Christ, but we never know that us doing the horoscopes, us doing, uh, going to mediums and psychics, we could never know those those things intertwine with good and evil, okay? And what happens is when you open those doors to the enemy, you give him legal right to cause destruction or wreak havoc. So if you notice, a lot of people who do those things, they never have any peace, right? They'll it'll go from, they can't hold relationships, um, they, they have insomnia and can't sleep because they're tormented by these spirits, um, cause you to continually just be uh, depressed, be sad, and you have to try to keep hearing this good news, but then it only makes it worse. Um, suicide, a, a lot of suicides can happen from result of these acts. Um, and again, the, the, those are kind of extreme methods. A lot of the times it's so subtle that you don't even know. For example, like the truth of scripture can show up and say, hey, you know, God says, um, you know, talking to the dead is like is real, but it's it's dark and demonic and it's not really um, it's not supposed to be done. And someone who have been doing that, even though they believe in Jesus, will go, you know, whatever It's crazy. It don't take God. It don't take all that to serve God. And they make up with all these excuses to keep doing the things that they find fulfillment. So if you're dependent on your future through um, the horoscopes, the mediums, the psychics, all that things, you have to ask yourself, Where's your faith in God? Because he holds your future and you're supposed to know that he holds your future. But if you go outside of him, um, then that's dark and dangerous. I'll give a quick story um, slash example of someone who did this. And in the book of First Samuel chapter 28, the king Saul, he was the first king over Israel. He was um, consistently trying to kill David. He was acting outside the will of God. And during his final battle, he... It was custom in Israel to always go seek the Lord before you go into battle so you could know if you were going to win or if you should do something else or have a different type of plan. So Saul wasn't consulting the Lord for a while. And what happened was he went to go consult the Lord to see if he should go into battle. But the Lord was silent because he was angry with Saul. And because the Lord was silent, Saul actually went to a medium to see if he should go into battle. And because he went to a medium, the medium told him Thing, the thing that would most destroy his heart. And yes, it turned out to be the truth, but that's because that truth at that moment would most, most destroy him. And that truth was because God uh, had given a prophecy to a prophet saying God's going to tear the kingdom away from him. So that medium conjured up this spirit to represent Samuel and it told him, yeah, your kingdom is being torn from you basically to really destroy him. And because of that, he ended up committing suicide and falling on his sword because he was so afraid of his enemies taking over him. So he consulted immediately and ended up committing suicide later on. Um, I'm out of time, but that was just an example of if God isn't talking, don't, don't, don't go and consult mediums, but continue to seek him. 
I love you guys. Be blessed. God bless you.